Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Located here in the mid-Pacific, Hawaii offers a very unique opportunity for bringing students from around the world together to learn about global issues. Our guest today is Mr. Robert Landau, Executive Director of the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools, who is also spearheading the first ever Global Issues Network Conference to be held at Hawaii's prestigious Iomani School. The conference will bring together 155 students from Oahu, Maui, and the Big Island, together with students from Seoul, South Korea. Welcome to Asian Review. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. Well, Global Issues Network Conference. Wow, it sounds pretty exciting. Well, it is exciting, Bill, and uh, actually it goes all the way back to 2006. The first conference started at in Luxembourg at the American School of Luxembourg and it stems from a book called High Noon 20 Global Problems in 20 Years to Solve Them and that book was actually written in about 2002 2004 so we're kind of running out of time if we only have 20 years to solve these crucial problems so it started at it was at the American International School did you say in, in Luxembourg? Luxembourg okay so is this something that goes from private school to private school to private school regardless where it might be in the world well, interestingly, the, the book was written by a vice president of the World Bank, um, and he wrote this book about the 20 global problems, really geared towards adult problem solvers. Mm. The head of the school at the time, Clayton Lewis, read the book, and it talked about needing networks of problem solvers around the world looking at local problems from a global perspective. And so Clayton said, this would be a great opportunity for high school students to deal with these problems long before they even get into university or into the, the real world. Wow. How long have you been associated with uh... Since the very first conference. I was the director of the International School of Prague. I knew Clayton. He was very enthusiastic about this first conference. And I thought, hey, we need to get involved. And as the director of the school, you know, sometimes directors tell other people what to do. But I said, look, I'm going to go with a group of students and some teachers to this first conference and see what it was all about. Mm, great, great. Well, um, yeah, this is it's really interesting. So uh, when exactly will, will it be held here at, uh, in Hawaii at Iolani School? So it's going to be uh, next week, uh, next February week? 24th and the 25th. And, you know, Bill, these conferences are run all over the world, primarily stemming um, from international schools. Mm. Uh, and many years ago here in the United States, the National Association of Independent Schools launched what they call Challenge 2020. It was kind of a similar thing didn't really take off and wasn't sustained and so now the National Association of Independent Schools really advocates for the Global Issues Network which is a international school worldwide uh, event so this um, conference will not only um, be held at Iolani School, be held at a number of other schools around the world. They're held all over the world at various times not in on the, the year. Not on the same day, okay. No, they're, they're different times. A school uh, volunteers to host the conference, invites other schools to join, and it's really the conference is an incubator, it's a stepping stone, it's a place where the kids come together and realize they're not alone in addressing and feeling passionate about these world problems. So uh, there was no gin uh, in Hawaii. I moved here from Singapore about a year and a half ago to take up my new job. Mm -hmm. And in Singapore and in the Asia region, it's a very vibrant and successful Global Issues Network uh, conference. And every school has a Global Issues Network club or class or curriculum. I think this is something Singapore would be particularly into. Yes. Uh, and certainly Singapore being a, shall we say, maybe a more advantaged country, right. surrounded by uh, developing countries. Right. It's great for um, Singapore and international students to be able to visit those other countries that are so close to them and realize that these problems are not hypothetical, they're real. So, okay, you've been involved with the conference for some time. You had experience with it in Europe. Um, you had experience with it in Singapore. Yep. Okay, now you've been in Beijing as well. Would yes. you have experience with it there? We were uh, the second, well, so, sorry, we were the first Asia international school to start GIN after the European 
So the Western Academy of Beijing, where I was director for three years, uh, they had the first gin conference in Asia. Oh, I see. Now, how did Iolani School get into it? Did you take it to them, or did they seek you out? Or So when I moved here about a year and a half ago, it was really important to me to stay connected to students. Mm -hmm. I was a little worried uh, coming out of the school side of my career that uh, I was going to move into a, a job where I was not going to have access to students. Mm. So at the same time, HEIS, Hawaiian Association of Independent Schools, was looking at our mission and vision. And we kind of all decided that we should be involved with the student activities. And so I thought, why reinvent the wheel, bring something in my suitcase that, <laughs> uh, you know, that you're never supposed to do that. You're never supposed to, uh, to do those kind of things. But I thought, this is really important. So I, we put together a steering committee. And uh, we happened to have a couple of people from Iolani on the steering committee. And as it became clear that gin was something people wanted to do, we needed that first volunteer school. Which school was going to be the first school to step up and host the conference? Because HEIS doesn't run the conference. The students from the host school plan, organize, and run the entire conference. So you don't wear your HEIS hat when you're involved with the conference? Well, HEIS is going to continue to kind of um, be the umbrella organization to ensure that gin is, is, is happening year after year. Because this could be just another one of those good ideas that fizzles out after a year. So HIS is going to keep looking for the host school each year, uh, teach the new host school how to run a gin conference in concert with the previous year's school. So now the conference, how long will it run? So it's going to be a Friday evening okay. where we open the conference and we have the great uh, slack key guitar uh, musician, Scott oh, Peterson, who is going great. to open the conference and dedicate a number to those amazing students. Uh, we have a, an incredible keynote speaker who is going to be there. His name is Ted Dintersmith, who co-wrote the book Most Lightly to Succeed and was executive producer of this movie, Most likely to succeed and he's going to encourage these students that by doing this kind of work by serving others and solving world problems it's going to set them up for success and then there are student speakers uh, Friday night and then they're going to network and have a social event in preparation for the full day on Saturday so this is all open to the public I take it it is not it is uh, not no oh. it is okay. not um, it is uh, this has been We've been planning this for over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, students have to uh, sign up for the conference. They have to have been engaged in a project in their school. Uh, students have submitted proposals to present at the conference. And this is uh, very much a, a at the moment. Now, who knows what's going to happen as we become more successful, I hope more successful, that we'll be able to open this up, uh, film it, do some documentaries around it. Um. Okay, who's offering the support for it? Obviously, Heist, obviously, Iolani School. Do you seek uh, grants from foundations, from corporations, and that sort of thing? Well, everything has to start at the beginning, and you know, entrepreneurial ventures, you're kind of struggling at the beginning. So, right. yes, we were looking for sponsors, but I know that, uh, and I, I may miss a few, but I know Foodland is sponsoring, great. and Whole Foods is sponsoring oh, that's great. the food, and Iolani is uh, sponsoring a lot of the conference. HAIS is sponsoring part of the conference. And uh, we're not charging the students any more than just the basic cost for some help with the food cost. But uh, this is not something where anybody's trying to, to make a profit. Are you getting any support from other private schools? Well, we've got about 17 schools that are at the conference. I'm really happy to say that we have charter schools and public schools are participating. Of course, once we hope this takes a hold and becomes more uh, known to to other schools that next year we're going to have even more participation. Because of the space at Iolani, we can only accommodate about 150 students this year. Mm, I see. So uh, 
another financial question for you. Yeah. Uh, how much of a budget do, does it require to run something like this? Well, you know, the, the thing about GIN is it's all dependent on the school that agrees to host the conference. So they incur a lot of the costs because they believe in the mission and the vision of Global Issues Network. So this is very much about um, volunteerism, about stepping up. Um, I remember back at the first conference in Luxembourg, a chewing gum company uh, stepped up and sponsored the entire conference. <laughs> but all of our speakers, uh, our guest speakers, our keynote speakers are not charging any kind of a speaker's fee. Oh, that's great. Um, everybody's volunteering their, their time. Uh, this is about ultimately ensuring that, that our young people see that these problems are real, that they need to be solved, that the solution to these problems ensures a better life for themselves and for their children and their mm. children's children. So this is all about us, you know, dedicating that time. You don't always have to, to dedicate money to helping others. You can also donate time, and that's what people are doing to put this conference together. It's, it's all good. Mm. And you know, one thing I've noticed since moving to Hawaii and uh, both independent public and charter schools uh, really care about service work. They care about helping those less fortunate. Uh, there are uh, so many schools here that already had that, that foundation of service learning, of, of uh, community service and social justice. But the important thing about Global Issues Network is the network part. Our students here in Hawaii are going to realize that there are students like them all over the world dealing with these same 20 problems and if they can all locally try to help that problem and solve that problem and deal with that problem imagine if they know that it's happening in Asia in Europe in South America that gives them hope and it gives them confidence that they can have a brighter future some of these connections they make will be lifelong connections, I'm sure. You know, uh, in being in international education my whole career, I've heard story after story of Global Issues Network students arriving in college, and maybe they just came from Singapore and their roommate is from Brazil, and they realized they were both at Global Issues Network. That's great. And they, they carry on their project That's great. once they go into university. So. Um, what are the 20 key issues? Oh. Can you, well, give us the top five. So the, the ones that you might imagine, there's um, deforestation, okay. uh, education for all, okay. ensuring that there are vaccinate, that, that children are being vaccinated against certain diseases, uh, marine life uh, issues, uh, copyright issues. Mm -hmm. um, the three categories that Jin focuses on are social problems, economic problems, and environmental problems. Mm. So uh, social could be exploitation of children, uh, child trafficking, uh, the homelessness problem, uh, all kinds of issues that deal with social, economic, and environmental. Mm. Very similar to the, the, the list that the UN came out with about a year ago. And our speaker on Saturday morning, Joshua Cooper, is going to be speaking speaking about, uh, uh, he's a humanitarian, uh, he deals with human rights, works with the UN in New York and in Geneva, and he's going to speak to the students about basic human rights and Great. what they can do. Great. Well, let's leave it right there uh, for the minute. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll pick it up from there. You're watching a Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. My guest today is Mr. Robert Landau, who is the Executive Director of the Hawaii Association for Independent Schools. He is also spearheading the Global Issues Network Conference, which will be taking place at Iolani School uh, right at the end of this month. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Carl Campagna and I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers and Reformers. I invite you to come watch our show on thinktechhawaii.com. You can also see our shows on YouTube as well, if you can Google search those. I appreciate the time. I hope that you do join us as we learn about education, about the educational system here in Hawaii, what the challenges are, what the benefits are, and how much our kids are learning. So thank you, I hope you join us. 
Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock, and we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners, and I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Welcome back to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Uh, we've been having a discussion here today with Mr. Robert Mandel, Executive Director of the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools, who is also spearheading the Global Issues Network Conference to be held at Iolani School right at the end of this month. Uh, just before the break, uh, we were talking about some of the substance of the conference itself and uh, some of the different programs and breakout sessions and that kind of thing. So I think that's where we want to pick it up. Um, there's, according to your promo literature, there's 14 presentations. So the conference takes different parts. First, we have the keynote speeches. So that's mm -hmm. where we're bringing in outside speakers who are in the business of helping those. They may be in a foundation, they may be motivational speakers, and that's to give that global uh, talk to the students about uh, the need to uh, be s service leaders and to, and to contribute to those less fortunate. And then we have what are called mentoring sessions where we have professionals from uh, NGOs and from foundations and other organizations that will focus on uh, deforestation. And those students who are interested in deforestation will meet with that mentor who will help them become a bit more focused around how they could solve the, the problem that they're interested in working with. Uh, but the real uh, beauty of the Global Issues Network are the student-led sessions. Mm. And so the students submit proposals. They may, they may do the presentation themselves or with their um, mentor from their own school, their teacher, but usually it's student-led sessions that they have submitted the proposal, that proposal has been accepted by the organizing committee, and they run the whole session themselves, students for students. And at the end of the day, those are always for the students the most memorable part of the conference. Do they have to write any report at the end of the conference, or what, what kind of record is kept uh, of, of the conference, and what is said, and what is transpired? Well, we do a lot of filming and we do a lot of uh, note taking. Uh, the observers and the organizers are going mm -hmm. around taking notes. We meet with the organizing students at the end to debrief and decide around next steps. But the real important outcome of the conference is to really continue to motivate and inspire the students to continue doing what they were doing before they got there. The conference doesn't solve the problem. The conference doesn't all of a sudden get them interested in doing this kind of work. The conference is where they all come together and realize that they're not alone, that mm. there are students like them that care deeply mm. and profoundly. This is not about uh, getting a credit. This isn't about their college app. This is the fact that they really believe these are serious problems that need to be solved. And when they're all together, it just encourages, encourages them even more. Mm. They're also going to be submitting films. Yeah, I, I, I read where there's nine films yes. that are going to be shown. And as we get uh, over the years and we do more of these conferences, some Global Issues Network conferences actually have a film festival because they may submit 30 films. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we show uh, the films that we think are the most inspiring. But like we have film nine festivals. films for yeah. this conference. Yeah, uh, That's great. Um, and can you give us an idea what some of these films are about? You know, to be honest, I don't know because okay. uh, the great thing about the conference is I get to be as surprised as everybody else <laughs> because I'm not there as the adult overseeing what's going on. I arrive and seeing the fruits of the labor of those students. They made the decisions about the films. They know what's happening. And that's what I love about gin conferences. What can these students do? And they're always surprising you and making you feel great. I, I sense a great teacher in you when you talk about students so much. Now, I know you're in administration now, but really good teachers have, and I, 
a personal affection and relationship with students, and I hear that in your voice. Well, Bill, I started as a teacher. I actually started in recreation. I started in camps, mm -hmm. and I worked in camps my, my whole youth and, and young adult life, and I was a teacher for a long time. And even when I was the head of a school, a 1,500 student school, I coached uh, girls varsity and middle school softball the entire time. <laughs> right. So um, you can't really know about what you're doing as an educator if you lose touch and you lose contact with students. That's 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 really true. It's unfortunate that some administrators do lose the, that connection. So to be honest, when I came here into this job, I thought, oh, maybe I'm going to be even more detached from students than ever before. So when I visit schools, I, I carry a, a it's actually called a gitalele. It's a cross between a ukulele and a guitar. Okay, a, git a, a, a gitalele. gitalele. And I take that with me when I visit schools, and uh, I'll say to the, the host, um, do you have any elementary kids that want to sing a silly song? Because I'd love to visit a classroom of students. So you're absolutely right. I don't want to lose touch with there is There is a strong sense of teacher in you, very strong, very Thank strong. Thank you. Um, okay, now, I, I, getting back to the promo literature that I read, uh, in preparation for our chat here today, it, it, they talked about four creative submissions. What are those? Again, you I haven't <laughs> quite seen them yet. <laughs> They're on the way. That's why they're creative. Um, <laughs> creative and secret. <laughs> and, and, and so, again, um, I know I'm looking like I don't know what's going on, but actually, um, in education today, when the adults know so much about what's going on, um, that's uh, 20th century education. Uh, education in the 21st century is turning education over to the students. So I actually, I know that's not great for the interview, but I actually am not sure I want to know until I get to the conference so I can be surprised and and just enamored with the creativity. No, I understand students. I understand what you're saying and I think probably it's probably a fair guess that students that participate in an activity like this are probably the better students, the more intellectually gifted. And they don't want to be told, they don't want to be preached to. And and I understand thoroughly what you're saying. The role of educators today, I think, regardless of level, well, pretty much regardless of level, is to sort of um, be a coach, uh, be encouraging, don't that's be right. the, the know-it-all. That's that's the, the way it's going in today's world. And, you know, not to, not to, to disagree with what you said, but uh, a lot of the students that become involved in Global Issues Network over my experience, it's, it's not an academic award, it's not a, um, a knowledge bowl, it's not a competition. Uh, it's authentic and real world, and and it's the cross section of students. You don't have to be the smartest student to care about about others. And so, these students are not just learning about the problems that they're trying to solve. They're learning about leadership and empowerment. Mm. Uh, when you're telling them you're running this conference, and you know I've been to conferences before where some of the students get the timing wrong or they haven't. Uh, fully decided what they're going to eat until the day before and and they haven't booked mm. the room correctly but that's the beauty of of the conference just that's because they learn experience. from that oh this is really interesting um breakout sessions what, what are those going to be or so so the breakout sessions is, is that yet to be discovered well i can tell you a little bit more conclusively that the breakout sessions if you have a student who is dealing with um, depletion of coral off the coast of uh, maui uh -huh. and that's the project that they and the problem that they're trying to solve the breakout session will be how they are trying to solve that problem so they're going to present their project or present what it is that they do to address the problem mm. students are address these problems by becoming filmmakers, they do photo journals, they write blogs, they write letters to the legislature, uh, they actually go out and volunteer, they do cleanups. Uh, there's all different ways that the students address the problem and there's no one way. They, that's the, again, 21st century education is about personalizing education, about ensuring that students really understand what they're passionate about. And that's the beauty of Global Issues Network. They deal with those problems in the way that motivates them and inspires them and in, in what they're passionate about. So they could write a protest song mm. if they were interested in music, for example. Oh, it's a great it's a great opportunity to be creative. Yes, oh, that's so great. important. That's great. Because yeah. we need 
creative solutions write to song, today's write problems. Write a poem or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Um, okay. Well, um, I, we're we're down to maybe our last seven minutes or so here. So tell us a little bit about Heist because a lot of viewers might not be all that familiar with it. Okay. So H I S uh -huh. or. Uh, the Hawaii Association of Independent Schools has actually been here for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came here a year and a half ago to uh, take over from Robert Witt, who was uh, our executive director for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are the organization that licenses uh, private schools in the state of Hawaii. And we also accredit private schools mm. and we actually uh, worked in collaboration with the California Association of Independent Schools to develop an accreditation process that is very strategic, uh, help schools actually look at really um, the issues that are uh, impacting the, the future of their school and dealing with those issues strategically through a set of standards. And so that's our, our licensing and accreditation side and the other side that we're really uh, go ahead. Two, we have. I just want to say we have two and a half minutes. Okay, so I'm going to quickly talk about our program side. Uh, okay, sure. And besides running now a, a, a very successful teachers conference called the uh, Schools of the Future Conference, we had mm. over 1,800 participants uh, last October. Just from Hawaii? Yes. Wow. Well, and from the mainland and, and from overseas. The mainland. So that's the 1,800. Well, that's pretty lot. Oh, it just every, we're 300 small, more than the year. Small 300 year than the year before. Mm. So we're launching a brand new conference this April called Leading School of the future and it's going to be for administrators decision makers board members uh, from not just independent schools we already have public school participants and charter school participants and it's going to be coming together we like again to say it's an incubator for change mm. what are the needs for education now in the 21st century and how can we all work together to ensure a, a better and brighter future for our students oh that's great that's great and that's uh, going to be by the way april 6th to 8th okay and there are are still places available for that conference. So you just that's, need to go uh, to our that, website. That, um, that's open to the public? Or? Well, it's certainly open to our schools, okay. but you know, there are board members and, and parents who connected with schools might decide they want to participate in the conference. But primarily it's for school administrators, board members, Okay, sounds great. Sounds great. Wow, uh, you give us a lot of good information on the conference and on heights. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like our time is just about up. So I want to thank Mr. Landau for joining us today. And thank you for joining us. Remember that all of our episodes of Asian Review are uploaded to YouTube. Uh, you can view them there by going to YouTube and then typing in Asian Review dash Bill Sharp and then clicking the playlist button. Join us next week, February 20th, when my guest will be Mr. Michael Riley, former de facto British ambassador to Taiwan, who will be coming to us from London via Skype. He'll discuss the implications of Brexit for Taiwan. See you then.